19.1 Human Excretory System In humans, the excretory system consists of a pair of kidneys, one pair of ureters, a urinary bladder and a urethra. Kidneys are reddish-brown, bin-shaped structures situated between the levels of last thoracic and third lumbar vertebrae close to the dorsal inner wall of the abdominal cavity. Each kidney of an adult human measures 10 to 12 cm in length, 5 to 7 cm in width, 2 to 3 cm in thickness with an average weight of 120 to 170 grams. Towards the center of the inner concave surface of the kidney is a notch called hilum through which urethra, blood vessels and nerves enter. Inner to the hilum is a broad funnel-shaped space called the renal pelvis with projections called calyces. The outer layer of kidney is a tough capsule. Inside the kidney, there are two zones, an outer cortex and an inner medulla. The medulla is divided into a few conical masses, medullary pyramids, projecting into the calyces, singular, calyx. The cortex extends in between the medullary pyramids as renal columns called columns of Bertini. Each kidney has nearly one million complex tubular structures called nephrons which are the functional units. Each nephron has two parts, the glomerulus and the renal tubule. Glomerulus is a tuft of capillaries formed by the afferent arteriole, a fine branch of renal artery. Blood from the glomerulus is carried away by an efferent arteriole. The renal tubule begins with a double-walled cup-like structure called Bowman's capsule, which encloses the glomerulus. Glomerulus along with Bowman's capsule is called the Malpighian body or renal corpuscle. The tubule continues further to form a highly coiled network, proximal convoluted tubule, PCT. A hairpin-shaped henle's loop is the next part of the tubule which has a descending and an ascending limb. The ascending limb continues as another highly coiled tubular region called distal convoluted tubule, DCT. The DCT is of many nephrons open into a straight tube called collecting duct many of which converge and open into the renal pelvis through medullary pyramids in the calyces. The Malpighian corpuscle, PCT and DCT of the nephron are situated in the cortical region of the kidney whereas the loop of Henle dips into the medulla. In majority of nephrons, the loop of Henle is too short and extends only very little into the medulla. Such nephrons are called cortical nephrons. In some of the nephrons, the loop of Henle is very long and runs deep into the medulla. These nephrons are called juxtamedullary nephrons. The efferent arteriole emerging from the glomerulus forms a fine capillary network around the renal tubule called the peritubular capillaries. A minute vessel of this network runs parallel to the Henle's loop forming a U-shaped vasorecta. Vasorecta is absent or highly reduced in cortical nephrons. 19.2 Urine formation Urine formation involves three main processes namely, Glomerular filtration, reabsorption and secretion, that takes place in different parts of the nephron. The first step in urine formation is the filtration of blood, which is carried out by the glomerulus and is called glomerular filtration. On an average, 1100 to 1200 milliliters of blood is filtered by the kidneys per minute which constitute roughly one-fifth of the blood pumped out by each ventricle of the heart in a minute. The glomerular capillary blood pressure causes filtration of blood through three layers, that is, the endothelium of glomerular blood vessels, the epithelium of Bowman's capsule and a basement membrane between these two layers. The epithelial cells of Bowman's capsule called podocytes are arranged in an intricate manner so as to leave some minute spaces called filtration slits or slit pores. Blood is filtered so finely through these membranes, that almost all the constituents of the plasma except the proteins pass on to the lumen of the Bowman's capsule. Therefore, it is considered as a process of ultrafiltration. The amount of the filtrate formed by the kidneys per minute is called glomerular filtration rate, GFR. GFR in a healthy individual is approximately 125 milliliters slash minute, that is, 180 liters per day. The kidneys have built-in mechanisms for the regulation of glomerular filtration rate. One such efficient mechanism is carried out by juxtaglomerular apparatus, JGA. JGA is a special sensitive region formed by cellular modifications in the distal convoluted tubule and the afferent arteriole at the location of their contact. 
a fall in GFR can activate the JG cells to release renin which can stimulate the glomerular blood flow and thereby the GFR back to normal. A comparison of the volume of the filtrate formed per day, 180 liters per day, with that of the urine released, 1.5 liters, suggests that nearly 99% of the filtrate has to be reabsorbed by the renal tubules. This process is called reabsorption. The tubular epithelial cells in different segments of nephron perform this either by active or passive mechanisms. For example, substances like glucose, amino acids, Na+, etc., in the filtrate are reabsorbed actively whereas the nitrogenous wastes are absorbed by passive transport. Reabsorption of water also occurs passively in the initial segments of the nephron. During urine formation, the tubular cells secrete substances like H+, K+, and ammonia into the filtrate. Tubular secretion is also an important step in urine formation as it helps in the maintenance of ionic and acid-base balance of body fluids. 19.3 Function of the Tubules Proximal convoluted tubule, PCT PCT is lined by simple cuboidal brush border epithelium which increases the surface area for reabsorption. Nearly all of the essential nutrients, and 70-80% of electrolytes and water are reabsorbed by this segment. PCT also helps to maintain the pH and ionic balance of the body fluids by selective secretion of hydrogen ions, ammonia and potassium ions into the filtrate and by absorption of bicarbonate ion from it. Henle's loop Reabsorption is minimum in its ascending limb. However, this region plays a significant role in the maintenance of high osmolarity of medullary interstitial fluid. The descending limb of loop of Henle is permeable to water but almost impermeable to electrolytes. This concentrates the filtrate as it moves down. The ascending limb is impermeable to water but allows transport of electrolytes actively or passively. Therefore, as the concentrated filtrate pass upward, it gets diluted due to the passage of electrolytes to the medullary fluid. Distal convoluted tubule, DCT, conditional reabsorption of NAPLAS and water takes place in this segment. DCT is also capable of reabsorption of bicarbonate ion and selective secretion of hydrogen and potassium ions and NH3 to maintain the pH and sodium-potassium balance in blood. Collecting duct. This long duct extends from the cortex of the kidney to the inner parts of the medulla. Large amounts of water could be reabsorbed from this region to produce a concentrated urine. This segment allows passage of small amounts of urea into the medullary interstitium to keep up the osmolarity. It also plays a role in the maintenance of pH and ionic balance of blood by the selective secretion of H plus and K plus ions. 19.4 Mechanism of Concentration of the Filtrate Mammals have the ability to produce a concentrated urine. The Henle's loop and base are to play a significant role in this. The flow of filtrate in the two limbs of Henle's loop is in opposite directions and thus forms a counter current. The flow of blood through the two limbs of Vasa Recto is also in a counter current pattern. The proximity between the Henle's loop and Vasa Recta as well as the counter current in them help in maintaining and increasing osmolarity towards the inner medullary interstitium, that is, from 300 milliosmol per liter in the cortex to about 1200 milliosmol per liter in the inner medulla. This gradient is mainly caused by NaCl and urea. NaCl is transported by the ascending limb of Henle's loop which is exchanged with the descending limb of Vasa recta. NaCl is returned to the interstitium by the ascending portion of Vasa recta. Similarly, small amounts of urea enter the thin segment of the ascending limb of Henle's loop which is transported back to the interstitium by the collecting tubule. The above described transport of substances facilitated by the special arrangement of Henle's loop and Vasa recta is called the countercurrent mechanism. This mechanism helps to maintain a concentration gradient in the medullary interstitium. Presence of such interstitial gradient helps in an easy passage of water from the collecting tubule thereby concentrating the filtrate, urine. Human kidneys can produce urine nearly four times concentrated than the initial filtrate formed.